the birds that we have seen today, we have seen royal terns and laughing gulls, and both of those species are going into the dunes to nest. We have seen black skimmers, which are just starting to show interest in nesting on the upper beach here. As far as shorebirds, we have seen red knots. We are worried about them. The, they are experiencing a 70% decline in population. And there is a lot of concern that the pop that, that subspecies might become extinct. So this is why we have a lot of studies going on to try to determine why they are diminishing in population and what we can do to protect them. Scientists in different places are banding them. And here we're trying to recite the bands and see uh, where they come from, how long they stay here. They all nest in the Arctic. And some of the birds go all the way to the southern tip of South America to spend the winter. So it's some birds that are always in summer, actually. It is about a 5,000 miles journey from South America to here, and then another 4,000 miles up to their nesting ground. And they do that twice a year. There is a, at least a red knot that has been seen was about 17 years old, at least. You're talking, I think they're saying that that bird has migrating the distance from the Earth to the Moon. This is how much he's migrating during his life. I'm a biologist with the Florida Park Service District 1 office. I'm actually responsible for all imperiled species, both plant and animal, within the District 1, so the entire panhandle. Um, however, my primary focus is on, on shorebirds, whether it's snowy plovers, least terns, oyster catchers, mainly everything that's listed. We try to get out once a week, um, search for new nests. We monitor for hatching or failing, so following that nest all the way through. Upon hatching, we try to um, capture the adults and the chicks to individually color mark them with, with bands. We also monitor for individual bands, so the adults that we've banded since 2008. We monitor for basically band reciting. That allows us to follow them for adult survival over time. My wife and I, Doris, who's not here today, have been surveying and monitoring red knots here at Fort George Inlet for the last 13 years. It's a passion, but it's based in a fundamental interest and curiosity about birds to begin with. Lifetime pursuit. The first banded or marked red knots that we saw had been banded by Patricia Gonzalez, the principal red knot researcher in Argentina. And she was very excited to get the report. She was able to identify the birds and even, even tell us specifically where they had been banded in Argentina. And since then, we've been monitoring and surveying red knots year-round, but principally uh, spring and fall. So these are all going to be placed on the upper leg of the, of the bird. It's going to be on the right leg. So right now we're going to put the service band on. This is going to be the only permanent marker. These are aluminum with a, um, a unique set of numbers on the band. All right, and then I'll, I'll double check uh, the number with her. With Rhea, 2381-06128. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the service band, we're going to put a series of plastic color bands on her legs. These are going to be her unique um, combinations so we can identify her any time in the field. So we'll be able to follow her um, the next few years.